What's up everybody, once again my name is Matt and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode we did a few slice of lifestyle side quests by helping a parent calm down his crying child, and then we also confessed our feelings to the lady of the item check even though they weren't exactly sincere. Anyways, in this episode I'm happy to say that since we did finish up all the side quests that I wanted to take care of up to this point, it's finally time for us to set off for the Lanayru region and start looking for the second sacred flame. And I'll admit, I'm actually really looking forward to this one because this next upcoming temple is one of my favorite in the entire game. And I think this temple is like a lot of people's favorite temple in the entire game because it's very memorable, has like a really cool atmosphere about it, and um, the boss itself is... One of the coolest in the entire game, albeit a little bit easy, it's still certainly interesting. So, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think you guys will enjoy it. So, of course, let's start by diving down into the Lanayru province. Now, oddly enough, we're actually going to land at the West Desert. I know it seems kind of random and sort of out of the way, but this is the closest like place we can land at to the new areas that we need to go to. Now, we're not going to start by going to those new areas right away. We're actually going to explore a couple areas we've already been to just because there's a few things that we can do and some goodies that I want to pick up. So, let's start by uh, taking our claw shots and going on to this upper platform. Now, this is like completely optional. You do not need to do this whatsoever. But, if we uh, take some time, head off to the right over here and uh, find a minecart that we can push down and sort of create a shortcut. Only thing is, this shortcut's almost entirely useless since there's multiple ways you can get up here. Now we can run up here, uh, there was the hookshot target that we originally used, and there's one off there to the right as well, so... Yeah, not exactly sure how useful that will be. On the other side though, we do have this small chest, and inside, we can find ourselves 20 rupees, so... Overall, not bad, totally worth coming up here just to get those rupees. Now that we've done that though and created that shortcut, what do you say we actually start making some progress towards the new area? We're not going to get too far because we will end up going back to a very, very early area here in the Lanayru province, but um, we're going to make way of a new shortcut, if you will. Now that we do have our claw shots, we can make our way back up to this sandy waterfall, and there are claw shot targets all over the place, so if we look up in the center, there is a claw shot target that will lead us into this weird cave structure. So let's head inside and see exactly where this takes us. So here we are inside the Lanayru Caves. Now the caves is basically a giant terminal that connects all the different parts of the Lanayru province. And as you can see, there's a Goron that the game really wants us to talk to and notice, but real quick, before we talk to him, let's exit stage left and head out in this direction because Believe it or not, this is going to take us back to the very beginning section of the Lanayru province. Yeah, the Lanayru mine. Not the mining facility, not the desert, just the mine. So, this is like where we first landed way, way back when we first opened the cloud barrier leading into this area. And funnily enough, all of these hookshot targets will take us directly back to that original landing spot. You might be wondering, why the heck do I want to go all the way back there? Well, I will say this much, it's entirely optional, but there is a treasure chest that we can go and get, so figured I might as well take a couple of moments and go and pick that up, because you never know what's going to be inside. And no, really, you do actually never know, because I'm pretty sure this chest just gives you a random collectible item, so we'll try our luck and hopefully we'll get something pretty good but um yeah you just want to walk around this outer edge and once you get to like the end you'll find this lone treasure chest waiting to be opened up and inside we're gonna get ourselves an evil crystal hey not bad not bad at all those are extremely rare so i'm not complaining that we already have two of them and in fact we can actually get a third one of them if we go back inside the Lanayru Caves, which is good for us because that is precisely where we're going. Now, um, I suppose the fastest way back would just to be like going through the Claw Shot Canal, if you want to call it that. Instead, I mean, you probably could just like use the save statue to go up to the sky. 
then pull a U-turn, come directly back down, land in the West Desert, and then use the claw shots near the sandy waterfall like we did earlier on in this video to get back to the Lanayru cave system. So do whatever you want, but I'm pretty sure this method is faster, especially since um you have to worry about like the longer loading times whenever you go back up to the sky from the ground, so. I'm going to say that uh, this is definitely the faster method of getting back to the caves because, yeah, we're already here. So, let's go back inside, and um, before we go and talk to that Goron who is mining away, if we stand in the center of these, like, bomb flowers, yeah, there's some butterflies in there, so let's pull out our harp and start strumming along because, yeah, one of these uh, gossip stones will appear, and I'm pretty sure this one will always give you an evil crystal, so... Ta-da! There we go, got ourselves another one, and also, there is this chest over here just, uh, chilling in the open, so, let's open it up, and see what's inside. Got ourselves a monster horn, not bad, yeah, we don't have a lot of those, so, I'm always happy when we get another one, that brings us up to three of them, pretty sweet. Some Bokoblins carry a monster horn on their waist. If you latch onto it and pull it with your whip, it's possible to claim it for yourself. Oh yeah, not really too sure if I explained that or not, but um... Yeah, if you see like any items on the waist of any other enemies, you can use your whip to steal them from them. I know I talked about that briefly when we were inside the ancient cistern because we had to steal that one key from that Bokoblin, but um... Yeah, you can steal like all sorts of items from the various enemies in this game. Anyways, uh, let me finish stocking up on bombs because we had zero for like the longest time and I don't know, I feel better now that we have like a full pouch of bomb flowers in case we ever need them. Alright, so let's go and talk to this Goron. I almost never get visitors. My name is Golo and I'm researching the legend of the three dragons, one of which is said to live here. At first glance, it would seem that there is nothing in this area, but I know there is something here. I will just keep on looking. So, your name is Link? I see. Not the easiest name to say, is it? And how about you, Link? Why are you here? You are looking for a sacred flame? That sounds like something I have heard of before, but maybe not. Sweet Goro! I remember now! I read something about it in the ancient scrolls that spoke of the Lanayru Sand Sea. I do not remember all the details, but you can get to the Lanayru Sand Sea if you just go straight through here. Ah, well is that so? Too bad it's uh, a locked door, that kind of stinks. If you want to get to the Lanayru Sand Sea, you're going to need this key. And yeah, just for talking to him, he gives us the small key we need to get out of this area, so hooray! Good luck to you! Well, thank you very much, my Goron friend. Um, there are a couple of rocks over here that we can blow up, so might as well. I really don't think either of these contain anything too interesting. Maybe just like some rupees. Not too sure, but might as well blow them up just to double check. Plus, like, rupees are good, and we did get a wallet upgrade in the last video to hold up to 5,000 rupees. Actually, even more because we have all the extra wallets, so I'm pretty sure we can hold up to 5,000 900 rupees, which uh, is pretty insane, so yeah, not gonna be filling that up anytime soon, that's for sure. I know I have sort of been wasteful with my rupees too, because there is a whole like side quest you can do with Beetle to get 50% off um, his merchandise, and like I've been totally ignoring that and just like flat out buying his merchandise, even though it is pretty pricey. So I'm aware that I've been a little bit wasteful with my rupees, but Here's the thing, like, we've always just sort of had the money, so it's like, why not? There's really not too many moments in this game where you're going to be worrying about, like, grinding up for rupees anyways, so that's sort of why I didn't really make that a priority. Anyways, though, now that we're done, let's grab our claw shots and start making our way towards the Lanayru Sand Sea, because... The Lanayru Sand Sea is actually a really interesting and really cool area, so I'm excited to show it off. But you know, just like with all the other areas here in Lanayru, it's kind of one of those things that I wish we could see back in the past because it would have been so much cooler. A report, Master. 
This is the Nehru Sand Sea. This whole area was once a vast ocean. But the water has all evaporated, and now the area is a sea of sand. Yeah, could you imagine what this area looked like back in the day, like before it just became a desert? It would have been so cool. Signs indicate that this place functioned as a port, linking the land to the sea. And yeah, this is going to fill out another section on our map, but you'll notice that our map is still not complete, so... There is like a whole other area of Lanayru we haven't really seen yet, which is kind of crazy to think about. This area operated on a new form of power. There is a 90% probability that the Sacred Flame is located ahead. I recommend exploring the Sand Sea. Alright, fine, you got it. So, let's make our way into port now. We do that simply by just using our claw shots and uh, latching onto these targets, but... Like I said, guys, it would be amazing to see, like, what this port looked like way back in the day before it was turned into this weird, just gross, disgusting despair of a desert because... This place was like an active port, like there would have been people here, there would have been commerce going on. Who knows what else, man. It would have been an amazing area. It's kind of sad when you think about it, like how this area went from being so technologically advanced to just what it turned into to where it is now, like things are falling apart and stuff like that. Like I want to know how that sort of happened, but sadly, we probably will never get like a game sort of explaining that or really going into detail about that. We will like briefly get a chance to see what some of this area looked like back in the past just due to like time shift crystals, but that's about all we'll get. Anyways, if we make our way back over here, there's a little bit of a secret that we can get and that is this goddess cube, but wait, holy moly, enemies have fallen from the sky and now we need to take them all out. What are we gonna do? Yeah, they're just like these weird sand crab enemies that uh, we saw inside the uh, Lanayru mining facility. They're pretty easy to get rid of, so just make sure you get rid of all of them, and then we can safely grab this goddess cube. So, let's charge up a Skyward Strike and send that one back up to the sky. So long, buddy. I'll see you a little bit later. Alright, so now that that is done, let's be on our way. Yeah, the only way back here is by using, like, your claw shot, because, um, if you go over here, you can see it is sort of a dead end, so you need to make sure you find that claw shot target and use that to reach that back area. Anyways, let's head over here and activate this save statue, just so, you know, we can dive down to this area from anywhere in the sky in the future. And, um, if we head out to the dock, you'll notice there is a boat there. And that boat does indeed hold a time shift crystal, so what do you say we activate it? And that's going to send just this little tiny area back into the past and even restore some of the water, which is pretty neat. And uh, by doing that, we essentially turn this boat into a miniature time machine. That's pretty much how we're going to be exploring the sand sea. Anyways, though, now that we've done that, let's go over here and talk to this robot. Hmm... Who are you? Bzzz, some human firm. Who am I, Berserk? I am the proud skipper of the ship that protects Nehru's flame, Fweep. Well, Nehru's flame, I kinda want that. It was the day of the storm, Fweep. My crew and I were navigating the seas as usual, Verm. And then those brutes, bzzz, the pirates suddenly attacked us. Bzzz. They were after Nehru's flame, zipped. My crew was imprisoned, Vert, and I was thrown into the sea. That's awful. I drifted on the current to this port, Verm. After that, I took this boat and went searching for my ship and crew, but they were nowhere to be found. Bzzz. It haunts me, wondering where my ship could be, Fweep. I'd bet my hat they turned the ship invisible and are hiding out somewhere, Verm. You can't see it. Uh, why not? Like how they make it invisible. In order to protect Nehru's flame, the ship has a function that allows it to become invisible, Veep. You say you're searching for Nehru's flame, bzzzt. Oh, so you need Nehru's flame to find someone important to you, Verm. In that case, you should help me search for my ship and crew, Fweep. If you'll help me, bzzzt, then I guess I'll let you on my boat. 
Well, in that case, I guess we really have no choice. Really, Verm? Well, in that case, bzzzt. Hmm. There's something weird about that map of yours, Verm. If you're going to navigate these treacherous waters, then you need a proper sea chart, do weep? There is a sea chart in my shack at Skipper's Retreat, bzzzt. So first, you need to get on this boat and set a course for Skipper's Retreat. Shall we shove off, Verm? Uh, what do you say we hold off on that for a little bit? We need to get a move on. Bzzzt, I agree. So, yeah, we need to make our way to Skipper's Retreat. That way we can get a proper sea chart and start navigating the sand sea. But we're going to do that in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this part of like rating, would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.